Hello and welcome to yet another conversation with the Infravision Foundation. Uh, thank you so much to uh, Professor Gopal Nayak of IIM Bangalore for being with us. Professor Nayak has co-authored a report on uh, warehousing and the challenges before it for the Infravision Foundation. And it's something that very clearly lays out what the challenges are and what the solutions could be. Thank you so much for joining us today, Professor Nayak. I wanted to begin with the obvious question. Why is warehousing so important uh, to India currently? Yeah, you know, if you look at agriculture, uh, many of the agricultural crops are produced uh, during certain seasons. So right. therefore, you need to carry it forward. And uh, therefore, you need, uh, you know, uh, warehousing storage facilities. Uh, it could be cold storage, it could be uh, normal storage. Uh, but in order to ensure that there is a, a proper intertemporal, uh, uh, you know, uh, transaction of commodities, uh, it's important that we have uh, uh, proper storage facilities, warehousing facilities in the country. And we have, uh, if I'm not mistaken, something like 1.2 lakh warehouses currently. Yeah, in, in, in terms of numbers, you know, we do have yeah. large numbers. Many of them are small ones, but yes, if you uh, you know estimate the number of uh, warehouses that are uh, there in the country, it will be close to that 1.2 lakhs. Yeah. So numbers is not uh, an issue. Number is not an issue. The quality is the major issue. Right. Uh, whether these uh, warehouses are fit for storing uh, agricultural commodities and of course the management is also another major issue. Uh, infrastructure is another uh, issue and also uh, you know the practices uh, followed in these warehouses are, are uh, uh, you know, important issues as well. These are all warehouses in the public domain, sir, in the public sector domain, or are they uh, in the private sector? No, in fact, about 50% are there in the uh, public sector domain, and remaining are in the private sector domain. In fact, more recently, the private sector is playing a major role in terms of uh, uh, owning uh, and operating the uh, warehouses. Right. Earlier, yes, state, both state and central government played major role in providing uh, various facilities. Right. So, what exactly are the challenges? Uh, could you break it down for our viewers? What What are the issues uh, that are currently uh, um, at stake? Because there has been some amount of intervention by the government in this area. Yes. Uh, I think the challenges are number one is, uh, of course, the infrastructure itself, right. uh, whether many of them fit to be uh, good warehouses where you can store your produce for a longer period of time. Uh, unlike in industrial products, agricultural products are more or less, you know, living, uh, 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 you know, uh, commodities. Uh, there is a, a shelf life. Uh, you know, they can be affected by insects, pests, and so on. Uh, or there, may, there could be normal deterioration of the quality. Uh, so therefore, uh, it needs much better uh, warehousing facilities than, uh, let's say, uh, what is uh, uh, needed in case of uh, industrial products. So therefore, uh, one has to ensure that those uh, requirements are met uh, you know, as far as uh, warehousing is concerned, uh, the physical storage, uh, ventilation, temperature, and, and other aspects of it uh, needs to be taken care of. Though there are standards available uh, to be, uh, uh, you know, constructing warehouses, uh, not all uh, follow those uh, uh, standards. And because of that, we do have a large number of substandard warehouses. Right. Uh, so that's a, an issue. The second issue is somehow uh, in our country, uh, if you are owning a warehouse, it's like owning a space, not really warehouse or hmm. warehouse providing warehousing facility. Right. That means, you know, if someone actually uh, brings produce to your warehouse, 
you are supposed to be the custodian of that particular produce that means you know you have brought uh, a product of a particular uh, quality and i will ensure you that you know this quality will be retained for another you know few months you know, could be 6 months 3 months and so on but that kind of uh, uh, services are not available it's basically saying that okay here is a space you can keep your things here and take it whenever you want and we are not held responsible right. for the quality deterioration so that's a major uh, you know mindset issue as well as of course it also requires such an amount of preparation uh, readiness by the various uh, owners to set their uh, infrastructure as well as their management processes right right so that's what is uh, lacking here in india right uh, so if i may ask uh, do we have any assessment that has been done on the state of uh, warehousing in india do we know how many are in a good condition how many need upgrades how many need uh, ventilation do we have any sort of assessment that has been done no actually in fact uh, we don't have a good list of uh, the warehouses uh, that's a major issue the data problem is very much there uh, as well as the conditions of the warehouses uh, you know that are existing as of now although during uh, wdra registration uh, one is supposed to see what are all the facilities there and so on right but uh, the problem is there is hardly uh, you know uh, a small percentage of the uh, total number of warehouses are registered so that, so what percentage has sorry uh, sir may i intervene here what percentage is in, uh, has registered if you look at of course uh, if you look at uh, the numbers these are uh, small numbers you know maybe 5 6% or so Uh, again, you know, it depends on how many are we counting as you know in, uh, uh, total numbers. Uh, so, therefore, uh, these are small numbers as far as the uh, you know number of registrations are concerned. And uh, because of that, we don't know uh, you know uh, the quality of the warehouses in uh, uh, in, in in the uh, non-registered uh, places. Uh, right and that's a, that's an issue uh right. you know yeah that means so how do we how uh, so uh, one way uh, one way is that when uh, these warehouses are registered there uh, then the government intervenes and says can we make sure that you follow x number of conditions to qualify uh, can something no, actually, like that be done as of now the registration basically says that okay do you have these 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 facilities right and if it is uh, so that you know it can be registered now uh, you know after that what is important is of course you have not only good facilities but also uh, you know you have proper uh, processes right uh, you know in order to ensure that the quality of the produce is uh, kept intact right but those kinds of uh, you know inspections and monitoring those things don't happen right so in terms of quality or quantity in fact you know there are also cases of whether the quantity itself is there or not right uh, so uh, you know a buyer would be very hesitant to buy or a lender would be hesitant to lend money against the commodity because they are not sure of the quality and quantity right so what are the what are the ways that we can overcome this given that a we don't know exactly how big the problem is because we don't know the state of the existing warehouses b um that even when these uh, uh, warehouses register which is not complete that whole process itself is not complete Uh, they don't really offer any guarantees yeah. so so what what can we do to overcome all these issues given given all these shortcomings yeah uh, i think one way to do is of course uh, you know uh, we should basically say that all uh, uh, warehouses should be registered 
right that uh, is the first step your, yeah that's the first yeah. step and irrespective of whether they have certain facilities or not right. uh, you register it right the second thing is you know we need to create a good database a, a portal which actually records the transaction from all the warehouses right that means you know if uh, uh, they are receiving uh, a, a lot or a commodity uh, that has to be entered through a, maybe an app or so which goes to a portal right. uh, which tells us that how much of what is available in which warehouse right and that would also help us in assessing how much space is available in that particular warehouse Okay. so that anyone who would like to know whether I, i can get a space of warehouse in the in the nearby places they can easily get to know about it yeah so that is the one you know first step this second step is a rating and grading of these uh, uh, warehouses so but then you know one has to have a, a way by which we can uh, grade them Uh, as well as allow the users to rate them okay right. so rating of these warehouses and grading of these uh, warehouses uh, according to the criteria established criteria uh, would provide lot more information to the users as to which one would they prefer and and, and where to go and so on and uh, the higher uh, grade uh, uh, warehouses can be allowed to issue e n w r yeah uh, electronic non uh, uh, you know the electronic negotiable warehouse this so that uh, and then one can sort of guarantee that if you have an e n w r then you know the government sort of guarantees that the registration process itself guarantees the quality quantity and therefore there is no need for any uh, additional uh security arrangement that needs to be done so therefore that would streamline the system which will also right. allow for a warehouse based sales if my quality quantities are ensured then you know the uh, long distance transactions are easier okay right. so somebody can buy from a distant place so these are the commodities available in this particular place of this quality and so on and i can bid for it and and buy it from anywhere uh, in the country and get it transported it so it will make the transactions uh, easier reduce the transaction cost if such uh, uh, you know facilities can be ensured in the warehousing space Uh, I'm surprised. Uh, um, no one has come up with any apps, uh, 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 you know, in, in this area, or have they? Definitely. And we don't know about it. Yeah, I, uh, unless you know, there, there are some private uh, warehouses, uh, uh, you know, uh, using it, but we don't have a common app which right. would collect information. and right. uh, provide that information you know, and aggregate it. uh so that it is very useful to the users absolutely uh, you can just figure it out it is like you know searching for a restaurant or so exactly you know, you it's like a zomato yeah. or a, or yeah. an uber uh, yeah. uber app. so exactly. uh, it's it surprises me sir that uh, neither the government nor the private sector has uh, i'm sure they must have thought about it at some point but uh, it's not been Im- implemented yes i think uh, uh, maybe you know, people may not have paid much attention to this uh, and uh, again uh, uh, to what extent the warehouse owners themselves are uh, interested in it and right. so on is, is a question though i would think that by doing so and if they are able to operate properly then their business is likely to go up absolutely they will only yeah. benefit from something like this exactly yes yes yeah for a fair business it is very helpful yeah but fair is the operative word <laughs> that's right yeah 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 that's right yes so uh, do we have any estimate of the kind of losses we must be facing because of an inadequate warehousing system for our agricultural produce yeah it actually depends on uh, 
uh, you know, uh, seasons and the and, and yeah, the, because you hear these stories of FCI go down, correct, being correct. full of rotting grain and people still yeah. starving. Those are not uh, grandmother tales. They they still happen. They still, of course, not to that extent. I think as it used to, time, yeah. Yeah, over a period of time, I think the government has been able to uh, take some steps to come up with uh, some temporary storages and so on. Right. Uh, reasonably good ones. And the technology also has improved quite a bit. And uh, therefore, uh, there is certain amount of uh, precautions used to reduce the uh, storage losses. Uh, an authentic uh, 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 a report that I have read from uh, one of the ICAR institution is it's about five to six percent, uh, which is still large uh, yeah. for grains and so on. Though right. I think for perishables, we you know there are these numbers which uh, basically float around. You know, we would say that thirty to forty percent and so on. But uh, for that's green, a lot. Yeah, thirty to forty percent is a is the a lot. Yeah. And right. that's of course for the perishables, you know, vegetable right. fruits and yeah. so on, uh, yeah. which are likely to happen because of where you know our infrastructure right. facility, cold storage, cold right. chain, uh, lack of cold chain and so on, and so that's uh, most likely to happen. But uh, in case of grain, it's about uh, five to six percent, but that's also quite high. And, and yes, what we why have should seen, we lose that amount? At, yes, at yes, all? yes, yes. One can reduce it considerably. In fact. Yeah. Uh, uh, some uh, um, I, you know, some reports uh, basically say that you know one can reduce it to about uh, 0.25 percent if it is actually uh, silos, steel silos, and so on for grains. You can reduce uh, 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 a lot. The other aspect of it is you know to what extent the uh, you know in the storage process people take. Uh, uh, good care, such a way that you know these are, uh, you know, the, 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 these are maintained properly and right, uh, uh, you know, uh, control methods are used. For example, you know, do they use do they use toxic chemicals, uh, right. which would have residual effect on yeah. the on consumer. the yeah, that's right. Yeah. So while we have uh, standards and so on, to what extent that is actually followed hmm. is something uh, you know is a question mark. Uh, so in the absence of uh, a good method of uh, due diligence uh, and you know inspection and so on, uh, there are uh, uh, there are issues of uh, uh, these kinds. Uh, which may have, uh, you know, huge impact on the uh, health of uh, people. Right. So the WDRA is the regulatory authority in charge of all this. So would strengthening it uh, ensure that these things happen? What needs to be done at that level? Yeah, of course, I think uh, uh, WDRA has to uh, understand the current uh, positions uh, because it's uh, a fairly new body, right? Yes, it's a regulator. Yes, it's, yeah. it's the central regulatory authority. And it's uh, quite young in terms of... Uh, it's quite uh, young, yeah. It started yeah. in uh, 2010. Right. Uh, and uh, uh, of course, they are also learning and so on. But the thing right. is, I think one has to really look at, you know, what is the current situation? What is the... Uh, required situation. I think you need to understand what is the required uh, right. situation and how do we move from current to required situation. And right. in fact, uh, our report is essentially trying to uh, say how can we bridge this gap, right. the current to, to uh, required one. So, uh, right. of course, we do have certain uh, constraints, you know, in terms of uh, size of the storage and and people who are managing it and so on. But I think we we follow some of these, like for example, register all of them and then have a, a proper uh, data coming from these uh, yeah. uh, warehouses. Then get into grading and standardization, 
issuing ENWR and so on. So that actually will force people to uh, look for their facilities and see what needs to be done in order to improve uh, their facilities so that they get a better grade and therefore better capacity utilization right. and therefore their economics will work much better. So that's how one should be able to move towards a, a better uh, warehousing situation in India. Does the farming community have any say in all this? Uh, really not. Actually, what has happened, of course, if you look at uh, over a period of time, except for a few large farmers, the others yeah. were basically um, growing more, more subsistence and right. of course, you know, whatever. Uh, even now, of course, whatever excess is there, they will immediately try to sell it off. Mm -hmm. uh, partly because they need money, because they maybe uh, they may have borrowed money from money lenders right. and so on, and they are not really, uh, 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 you know, in, in the absence of a good warehousing facility, they are not really looking to get better prices using storage facilities. You know, so I think they, it's quite clear that, you know, if they store for two months or three months or so, they get they will get much better price. But uh, in the absence of a good uh, warehousing service, uh, you know, they are actually uh, trying to sell as early as possible so that, uh, you know, they can, and they, one is, of course, they can pay off their um, uh, yeah. debt. Uh, and in the in the process, you will see a glut in the market during the harvest season. Right. The prices go down, and they don't get a, a good price uh, for their produce. So, sir, there has to be a certain amount of education at that level as well among the farming yes. community. Sure, sure. Yeah, Is of that course, happening? Yeah. yeah uh, well, you know, in, if if there are these facilities come up. Uh, then we would see that uh, uh, you know farmers they will is, change. Yeah, they will change. Right. Uh, again, this is also linked to the credit availability and so on. Like right. formal institutions, you know, do they get uh, credit from far formal institutions or not? Uh, so that uh, they can delay uh, repayment uh, um, right. uh, because the interest rate will be a reasonable uh, level and so on. So uh, there are these other issues, uh, you know, tied to, uh, uh, you know, uh, using warehouse space by farmers. But of, of course, you know, if there are good warehousing facilities, they, you know, there is always uh, a possibility of uh, farmers using it. Uh, and of course, I think one has to really look at, you know, as a warehousing uh, managers, one has to look at how do you integrate services. Right. Uh, they themselves may be able to provide a certain amount of credit to farmers. Right. They may be able to provide uh, the transportation service to the farmers, the warehousing and the warehouse based sales. So, you know, if you are able to integrate these services, then the, it will be much more attractive to the farmers. So is there, is there something that one can do in terms of setting up pilot projects where you use uh, one uh, warehouse as a sort of model warehouse which is able to do these uh, additional so provide these additional services as well and then that area can at least see uh, the potential in this yes uh, actually you know it's also coming up now uh, we had uh, reported one uh, case case study of area collateral uh -huh. uh, which basically looks at smaller warehouses right. uh, trying to uh, make it as good as possible in terms of infrastructure and so on and right. provide an integrated service to the farmers so this, it is, includes, a company, this is a private organization it's a private organization so uh, they have been doing it and they have been doing it very well i think their um, volume of uh, uh, storage has gone up uh, substantially uh, because of their services and these integrated services. Right. So, uh, so can these be replicated uh, elsewhere? Yeah, yeah, sure, sure, it can be replicated. It can be right. Replicated. 
so yes. is there lack of information about it what what prevents it from being replicated well i think uh, uh, you know in all agricultural uh, you know business there is always a certain amount of initial learning is there right uh, learning to see what is right for a particular area and how the process should be done in order to uh, suit the requirement of the area and so on and uh, many times uh, the uh, you know people may not be interested in spending that initial uh, effort Uh, in order to build businesses so that is the i see that as an issue but i think slowly these will come up the private sector will move in and, and i'm sure there will be uh, many more interested in providing such services right so if i were to ask you to sum it up uh, uh, sum up the uh, the solutions that uh, the report has offered sir uh, how would you what would you do what would you be saying Yeah, essentially, I think we need to look at the registration as a mandatory registration without any conditions like barren right. guarantee and so on, so that right. the it does not increase the cost of yeah. registration without providing any benefit. Right. And then we need to have a, a good information system which is able to get uh, the all the transaction level information, aggregate it. and provide it to the users so that they can make use of these different warehouses of different grades uh, right. according to their needs right. and therefore we would see that the volume of business will also go up and there will be a uh, an interest or a motivation or incentive for the warehouse people to really move up in the ladder in terms of providing more professional services to the uh, uh, to the uh, users right wonderful i think that was really very clearly put and i do hope uh, you know uh, this reaches the right ears we will make sure or, or at least we'll try our best to do that thank you so much for talking to us uh, professor and um, you'll be hearing more from us on this